yo what's good basketball heads it's your boy crush so former laker legend laker great michael cooper had a few words for jj reddick after jj reddick constant disrespect of the 80s players in the 90s saying that you know they couldn't play in this era and just constantly disrespecting all the 80s and the 90s legends and greats and so michael cooper had this to say about jj reddick that guy have no clue of how basketball was played in the 80s, said Cooper. And I guarantee you this, J.J. Reddick, if you had played in the 80s, I would have locked your ass up. You wouldn't have got a shot off. You wouldn't have gotten nothing off. You would have spent more time on the bench than on the floor. You couldn't have played when I was on the floor, and I'm telling you that. Need I remind you, this man was the defensive player of the year in 1987. So it's not like he's just talking out of his ass. No, this man won a Defensive Player of the Year award. I, and I definitely think a lot of the players now like J.J. Reddick, Gilbert Arenas, you know, always talking crazy, just saying these outlandish, bizarre things about 80s basketball and 90s basketball and these players then, and players then couldn't play today because today's players are just so much better and advanced and just all this nonsense if you listen to them. I would take his word for it because he did win Defensive Player of the Year. And that's not something easy to win. That means this man plays great defense, basically. So he said he would lock J.J. Redick up. He would spend most of his time on the bench. He would be a bench player, basically, a bench warmer. And if, he's, if that's what he said, I'm going to believe him because why wouldn't I? Cooper was one of the best defenders in the league in the 1980s. This dude was a lockdown player. He would lock you up, handcuffs and chains, basically, jailhouse. So trust me, he would have certainly shut down J.J. Reddick fairly easy. Fairly easy. Plus, remember, J.J. Reddick is more so a, you know, a three-point shooter. He's known for, you know, spot-up shooting. J.J. Reddick is not a one-on-one -on -one player where he's going to have the ball and take you off the dribble. No. Of course, most of these dudes who played in the 2Ks, they think everything before that was garbage, basically. So all the players that played prior to the 2Ks, they just can't, they just can't compete. I don't know why that is a thing, or I can't understand that thought process, that thinking, but that's just how a lot of these players think, that players from, you know, yesteryear just can't compete or can't play in today's game. Like Gilbert Arenas recently bogus take about Bill Lambert. If you listen to these people talk, man, you, when you listen to a lot of these NBA players turn analyst talks, sometimes you're like, what? It's surprised you're like, you played basketball. So to hear them say these outlandish, crazy things, and they play the game professionally, it's just bizarre. I don't know what it is with all these players trying to bash the players from yesteryear. Like, why? I don't get it. So J.J. Redick and Gilbert Arenas has been pissing off all these older players and these legends for a few months now. Just making these bizarre statements and disrespecting them and talking about they can't play today and just all this nonsense. I don't, I don't understand the thought process behind all this. The game now, you can't hand check. Defense is not as good. I mean, there's so many things that favor players from back then playing right now. But for some reason, players from the 80s and 90s just couldn't play today. They just can't seem to survive in today's NBA. It is just too brutal. I don't get it, but, you know, that's their thought process. J.J. Reddick also said crazy things like Larry Bird didn't belong in the discussion, wasn't in the discussion based on the numbers as far as the best three-point shooters. Like, think about it. That sounds crazy. So Larry Bird, Larry Legend don't belong in the discussion when you're talking about the greatest shooters, the greatest three-point shooters ever. Based on the numbers, he doesn't belong in that discussion. Even though the game now, players shoot more threes than ever, basically. Way more threes than ever. No time in the history of basketball have players shot more threes than the modern NBA. Threes are more emphasis than two-pointers. Like, there are some teams, that's all they shoot is three-pointers. Like, 80% is three-pointers. That's all they shoot. Threes. I mean, the game has evolved and it's a different game, yes. But to say that Larry Bird 
shouldn't be considered one of the best, greatest three-point shooter, greatest shooter ever based on numbers. That sounds asinine. That's crazy. But this is the type of stuff J.J. Redick will say. And if you are an idiot, you would actually believe him when he say these asinine, crazy, outlandish, outlandish takes. Like, what are you talking about, J.J.? Players today don't factor in the physicality back then. You have to factor it in. They could bump you, hand check, all this stuff. A dude could put his hand on your hip and guide you to where he wanted you to go. They could do all this stuff, which you can't do today, which alters the game, obviously. You know, imagine in the modern NBA, if you could hand check, you could put your hands on dudes. You could get really physical with them. You could get really physical with them, like really physical. Imagine how different the game would be if that's the case. So yes, the game changed. The game has is the game have evolved. Rules have changed. A lot of rules done changed over the years, over the decades. Yes, the game has changed in a lot of ways. You know, from gameplay to rules, all this affects what's going on today. So to say, Larry Bird don't belong in the best shooter discussion is crazy. But once again, these are the things people like J.J. Reddick. And Gilbert Arenas would say, and if you're an idiot, you would listen and believe. Like, this sounds crazy. Saying stuff like he has seen instant where Bird had no one around him when he shot the ball compared to Steph Curry. I'm telling you, man, if you listen to J.J. Reddick speak, you would be like, this guy actually played basketball? Because he says some of the most outlandish things. Like, what? Do he not know that Steph Curry comes off multiple screens and picks? The man be running around, Draymond Green set a pick, somebody else set another pick. Steph Curry's a great shooter, great player. No one is arguing that. But for Steph Curry to be effective, he needs a lot of picks, and a lot of screens. You got to set a lot of screens and picks for him so he could get his shot off, basically. He's not going to get his shot off when somebody's all up in his face. I'm not saying he can't, but that's not how his game is played. The Golden State Warriors set a lot of screens, a lot of pin downs, a lot of, a lot of picks for him. He comes off a lot of picks and screens to get his shot off. I mean, it's just a different game. And back then, threes wasn't emphasized like it is now. Yes, you had players who shot threes, but not to the level right now. In no era have they shot threes like right now due to the Steph effect. So no one would argue if you say Steph is a better shooter than Larry Bird. There's no argument. No one, no one would argue that. But to say Larry Bird don't belong in the discussion, you now you're just you being disrespectful. You you Period. You you're just being disrespectful. So J.J. Reddick said he didn't disrespect Larry Bird. He's only questioning the narrative around physicality. The same dude who got blasted by Jerry West for saying Bob Cousy played against firemen and plumbers. That's what J.J. Reddick said. So as you can see, he's always disrespecting He's always disrespecting players of the older generation, you know, the NBA legends of the world. He, J.J. Reddick always has something bizarre to say. Same thing goes for Gilbert Arenas. And you got to take it all with a grain of salt, man. Like, do they really believe what they're saying? Or maybe they're trolling for ratings? I don't know. I mean, it seems like he believed what's coming out of his mouth, clearly. But... Half the time, matter of fact, most of the time, it's so bizarre that you got to be like, is he trolling? Maybe he's just trolling, trying to get views and ratings. I don't know. So Michael Cooper, you know, he came for J.J. Reddick. You know, he came for his neck, rightfully so, because J.J. Reddick be out of pocket all the time. As always, I'll holla. As always, we just talking basketball. Hit the subscribe button, like, comment, share, holla at your boy. It's all about the game and how you play it. It's all about the game. I'ma say it. It's all about the game.